Well, hello everyone. As you know, every week I come on here and do a Q&A video, and that time has arrived. And hopefully this finds all of you well. Maybe some of you will choose to watch this instead of the pay-per-view on Sunday night, instead of Raw on Monday night, uh, Retarded Raw on Tuesday night, excuse me, SmackDown Live. No, I said it right, Retarded Raw. Hopefully it finds you well and you enjoy this. If not, eh, what are you going to do? You can't please everybody, so why bother trying? But let's go ahead and answer some of these questions. Mounty's Corner kicks us off by asking, should I do an OTR Essential Skip parody video? Yeah. Why the hell wouldn't you? I would enjoy that probably tremendously, as long as it was good. And if I was doing more of the characters more consistently, that would probably make it easier for you to have content. But I'm sure I say enough off-the-wall, crazy, dumb, stupid things that you could find the path to making a very fun parody video. So knock yourself out. Figuratively. And if it sucks, then literally. Mr. Pio one asks, How are you today? And how are you feeling in general? Gee, what a wonderful question. I think it's usually you're the one that asks this question anytime anybody actually cares to give a shit to actually bother asking. I'm recording this on Sunday. I'm doing quite well, thank you for asking. I hope you are doing well, too. I'm enjoying my day off of work. And, you know, I got to say in general, with, with the gig that I have, it's nice to be able to work four tens. Work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Be off Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It's nice work if you can get it. And how am I feeling in general? Pretty good. Pretty good. Feel kind of busy with the job and then doing the videos on here and then also the Schlag Daddy TV channel, especially with all the stuff going on with the NFL. Some other stuff that I'm doing. You know, feeling pretty good about things, honestly. So thank you, sir. And I hope you're doing well also. Project Avant asks, Pick one who should have gotten a WWF title run. Rowdy Roddy Piper or Jake the Snake Roberts? Piper, because especially if the timing would have worked out better, in theory you could have had Hogan win the belt at WrestleMania 1, just throwing that out there, or at the war to sell the score, you know, something along those lines. Hogan chasing a heel Piper who's champion really would have worked. Piper also was a little bit more reliable than a Jake the Snake who had his own issues and demons. Nothing wrong with Jake having maybe a world title run, but out of the two, I would have chosen Piper. Uh, Carmine Riches. How much better would WWE's product be today if they went back to using Pyro, stopped with the overdone camera zoom-ins, threw good working punches, sold better, and a bunch of other things? It'd be a good place to start. It wouldn't be the be-all, end-all. Like, even when you get past, like, not liking the characters, not liking the stories. There are other small details and things that WWE could do to me that would help make the product a little more palpable than what it is. And some of those things you mentioned would certainly help. And to me, those are the things that there are going to be different times in any business, any company. You're going to have up periods, you're going to have down periods. And that could be due to factors out of your control. A lack of talent, just sometimes you're in down cycle in terms of creative ideas, in terms of your vision. Execution's not the best, a lot of things. But to me, the thing that you cannot and absolutely should not get wrong are the little things you can control. You can control the feeling of the show in terms of things like pyro, in terms of the sets feeling different for the different shows. Uh, being careful with the overdoing of the camera zooms, making sure your camera work is top notch and on point. Uh, making sure the guys throw punches that look real, that look legit. Making sure that people actually sell stuff so that way when it happens, there's actually some consequence to it. You know, that would help. There's no question. It's not the be-all, end-all, but there's not one be-all, end-all. It really isn't. Um, but those wouldn't be bad places to start. Hug Life for Life asks, Odds that the Velveteen Dream gets an actual push on the main roster. Uh, because he's a guy coming up from NXT, initially you would say Vince gets his hands on him maybe 25% at most. Then you would say, eh, Triple H is getting a little more sway, so maybe you break even and say 50-50. But then, because of the type of gimmick that the Velveteen Dream has, and because it's the type of gimmick that I could actually envision Vince McMahon being quite a bit behind, 
because he has this sick thing that all black men seem to have to act suspect or do shit like that, I'd put the odds at at least 75%. I really would. I'd actually be more surprised if Velveteen Dream didn't get a push once he got to the main roster than if he did. That's just how I'm saying. Horror Movie Review 73. The worst WrestleMania. Was it WrestleMania 15 or WrestleMania 2000? Um, Neither one of them were particularly great shows, honestly, but 2000, I think, was worse. And if you go back and watch my old WrestleMania Review series, I believe I talked about WrestleMania 2000 being worse. I believe. Could be wrong. Uh, Kieran Chase. If Triple H is God, ugh, what does that make Vince McMahon? Jehovah? Allah? I haven't really thought about that. It's a great question. Lord JCW, thoughts on the possibility of Team Shane versus Team Brian at WrestleMania? Please tell me this is not a thing. Please tell me that you would not spend months as a company building up to something like this. I don't believe it is. I don't think they are, so... I, you might just be randomly throwing this out there. No, 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 no. Survivor Series, absolutely. WrestleMania, hell no. Victor Tran 562. Would Eric Bischoff's WCW The Big Bang, Re Big Bang Relaunch pay-per-view have been successful? Mm. From a box office standpoint, if they actually bothered to sell tickets and they actually worried about selling the pay-per-view, maybe... Maybe, especially if they had taken a little bit of time off and this is when they came back, then there would have been some increased interest. So initially, I think financially, from a business standpoint, it would have been a success. What it would have meant for a WCW brand uh, long term, where would their television home have been? What would things have looked like? I don't know about all that. But in terms of this, it probably singularly on its own would have been quite a nice success. Uh, Charles Mitchell, will WWE increase Brock Lesnar's pay to get him to stay? At this point in time, I just don't see where the payoff is. Honestly. You're paying him, what, five mil a year or so? Something along those lines? I just don't see where the payoff is. I would rather take that money and redistribute it throughout the rest of my product. I would rather take that money and redistribute it uh, throughout the rest of the talent on the roster than to give it to Brock Lesnar for $5 million or whatever it is a year. Because you've also reached that point to now with me where you really don't have anything left for Brock to do post-WrestleMania. If you don't have anything for him to do, the best thing you could do is let him go do something else for a little while. Maybe bring him back in two or three years. But right now, I just don't see after Mania where you've got anything for him. And then you're trying to artificially manufacture and create things for him to do. You're at the end of the cycle here. You're at the end of the run with Lesnar and WWE the way I see it. They may keep him, but I don't think they should. I most certainly don't think they should. Uh, Sam Katz, is Road Dog worse than Vince Russo? God, yes. Yes. Hell, yes. Red Exodia. I hope I said that right. If not, I apologize. Would Braun Strowman being champion cause similar issues with Lesnar as champion in terms of uh, the number or lack of number of believable opponents? Um, long term, potentially, but I don't envision you would keep the strap on Braun for a super duper long time. But Braun would still have guys that he could face for the title. Part of the problem with Brock is he's faced most of the big names in big spots and for the title. So it's slightly different. I get what you're saying. And if they kept the belt on Braun for a long period of time, then yes, they would run into that same issue. But they don't have that issue right now. That they do not have. Uh, Mason Clark, could Reigns Lesnar be as bad as Goldberg Lesnar at WrestleMania 20? No, because we saw this match happen at WrestleMania 31. And it wasn't bad, it was actually good. Now, there uh, could be some thought to if Lesnar's leaving, he might not give a fuck. And that could be part of the concern for WWE, why they might want to keep him a little bit past WrestleMania to ensure that they get what they want out of him at WrestleMania. But maybe Brock being at a different place and point in time in his career would actually give a crap even if it was his last WWE match, his last WrestleMania match. He might want to make sure he went out in a big way, and that is possible. It might not be, he might, I just might not truly give a crap. But it's also possible that that's what he would think. Um, Goldberg and Lesnar was kind of this weird configuration of a lot of things because this was, this was the epitome of a WrestleMania dream match and it was going to happen. And then the rumors start leaking out that both of these guys are leaving and this is their last match. And yeah, I can't imagine Reigns Lesnar getting into Goldberg Lesnar territory. No way in hell. 
Uh, Matt Mefe, how long does Roman hold the title after WrestleMania? Possible challengers. Here, here's the thing, and some might not like this, but I mean, from a logical standpoint, it makes a lot of sense. If he's going to go in there and beat a guy in Lesnar who held the belt for a year, then he should hold the belt for at least a year, if not maybe a year and a half. Because what good would it do to spend all this time getting to Reigns and Lesnar and then build up Roman Reigns and build up Lesnar and then have Reigns beat him at Mania and then in three months he's losing the tech strap to somebody at a fuck-all pay-per-view? I mean, the real truth to me is, is that now it's a little different in a way because Roman's on TV every week, so you would have to get ways to get mileage out of keeping him a champion that long. But he's got to have a lengthy title reign. Otherwise, why the hell build it all that? Why the hell do it? That's just a thought. New Mosaic. Will WWE ever induct Scott Steiner into the Hall of Fame? If they did, it would probably be with his brother Rick, but he's going to have to have a lot of mea culpas about things he said and things that he's done, so I don't see it happening anytime in the near future. Uh, Junior, should WWE leave USA Network for Fox? If it involves going on like Fox Sports 1, hell no. If it involves prime time during the week on Fox, like free over-the-air Fox, then they'd be stupid not to. Because naturally, they will reach more television homes. Naturally, they will have the chance to get a larger television rating, a larger share of the audience than being even on the USA Network, which has a pretty massive distribution for a cable satellite channel. If Fox comes calling, it means they're going to outbid USA for the rights, and they're going to offer you primetime free over-the-air television. You have to take that deal. You must take that deal. Daniel Giza. Buy or sell? Godfather versus Goodfellas. I'm assuming you're asking which one is better because it's kind of weird to ask buy or sell. I'm just, honestly, uh, maybe you could clarify in the comments what you meant by the question. Which movie was better? It's really tough, but I'm probably going to go with Godfather. Because Godfather had Marlon Brando, Al Pacino, James Caan, Robert Duvall, Talia Shire. Abe Vigoda. I mean, the acting chops in that movie were absolutely incredible. The story was great. And Goodfellas was great, too. I mean, you had Ray Liotta and De Niro and Pesci. I mean, that, that's pretty good right there. I love Goodfellas, but I might love Godfather just a tad bit more. Now, if you ask me Godfather 2 or Goodfellas, it's Godfather 2 all day. It buries Goodfellas, but that's because Godfather 2 is arguably along with... Uh, the Empire Strikes Back and a couple of others, one of the greatest sequels of all time. Lysander, at what point did the possibility of competing of TNA competing with WWE uh, become lost? Honestly, I think it was January 4th, 2010. You had more eyeballs on your product than you ever had. You had Hogan, you had Bischoff, you had this name recognition, you had this credibility, and then you go out there and you trot out that show. And then you start thinking about, we're going to go head-to-head -head with them on Monday nights. And there's a lot of bad decisions made. But to me, the same night that they had the opportunity to step up a level and potentially be competition was the same day that that hope ultimately died. was January 4th, 2010. James Faluca, why do people use terms like smart and IWC when honestly everybody's smart uh, to wrestling today? It seems kind of stupid. Maybe. But... When we're talking about stupid, let's really be honest. We all, in some different way, enjoy watching half-naked men wrestle in tights. It's kind of stupid in and of itself. We come on here and discuss and debate and argue about characters and storylines over some scripted bullshit. That kind of makes us stupid in and of ourselves. There are different types of fans. Like when somebody says, well, IWC is kind of a dumb term because every wrestling fan is on the internet. Yeah, in theory, but not every wrestling fan goes to wrestling dirt sheets and websites and post about it via their social media. There, there are differences, so I understand trying to quantify it. Um, I get what you're saying too, though, but that's just kind of the way I look at it. Uh, Chase Holland, how long do you think Impact Wrestling will stay in business? The honest answer to me is for the foreseeable future. Every time we want to write them off, every time we want to dismiss them, they find a way to stay alive, even in the face of logic and good business sense. So at this moment, I don't see any reason why they would go away anytime soon. 
They might continue to be a less and less recognizable brand entity company, but I won't bet against them staying in business. Uh, Alistair Sloan, thoughts on the new NXT North American Championship? I take it this must be the NXT mid-card title that people were talking about. Why does your developmental territory have a mid-card title? We have too many belts in the WWE as it is. Do we really need another one? Because again, it comes to this whole thing of trying to create reasons for people to have a story instead of trying to create real meaningful stories. Oh, they got a belt, so now they got a reason to fight. Nah, not always. Um, no, nah, I think it's kind of stupid, personally. And Alfredo Regalado closes us out by asking, how bad do you think WrestleMania 34 is going to be? Oh. I'm honestly not sure. Because there's a chance that Reigns Lesnar could be really, really good, even if the f crowd shits all over the finish. Um, AJ and Shinsuke could be so so, could be pretty good, could be epic. And any of those is possibility, because it depends on where they're at in the car, depends on how much time they get, depends on where they go with it. Um, Angle Rousey versus Stephanie and Triple H could be a surprisingly good match. It could also be a slow plotting get the hell over with match. To me, I look at WrestleMania 34 and it could go either way when you're talking about the scales of WrestleMania quality. It could surprise and be really, really good or it can be really, really crappy. Yes, there's a lot of wiggle room in there, but I feel like it's going to be one or the other. Really good or really shitty? And at this point, I will lean negatively towards the really shitty part, but know and understand and realize there is also a chance that it can exceed expectations and over-deliver. There's a chance. But they run the Memphis mid-card piece of crap founder into their Hall of Fame. So screw them. Screw them. But anyways, thanks for you guys for asking all these questions. I look forward to doing this again next week. And remember, this is OTRS Central, not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need. Take it easy.